Hey everyone, welcome to part 16. Now let's shift our focus to creating the wire mesh that goes with the gas tank. To keep things clean, we'll start with a new tool. Bring up the gizmo and from the gear, we'll select polyplane. We'll set the X divides to 10 and the Y divides to five. Now scale along the X axis. Hold down shift while you're doing this to snap to 0 0.05 increments until we reach two. Here's where things get interesting. To create the mesh, we're gonna take advantage of micro poly. You'll find it nestled under the geometry section in the tool palette within dynamic subdiv. Let's turn on dynamic and click micro poly. We're gonna to wanna to select the hex plane. One cool feature about MicroPoly is that if you increase the Smooth Subdiv slider, the MicroPoly increases too. But for now, set the Smooth Subdiv slider to zero, then hit Apply. Just remember to turn off MicroPoly the next time you activate Dynamic. Press Uncrease All and click on Crease PG. Then set the Smooth Subdiv to two. You might notice some unwanted creases happening. Don't worry, we've got this covered. Click on weld points to fix the issue. Again, press uncrease all and click on crease PG. Now we can press Control W to group visible. Now it's time to grab the slice curve brush and mark out our polygroups for deletion. Go ahead and press close holes and QC50. Finally set the smooth subdivision to four and decrease level to two. Since we already tackled one wire mesh, we're in a good place to start on the mesh for the front intake too. Let's start with a new tool. Bring up the gizmo and from the gear menu, let's choose polyplane. Now we're gonna do a X divide of 20 and a Y divide of 10. Just like before, scaled on the X axis. Remember to hold shift to snap it to 0 0.05 increments until we reach two. Next up, let's select insert point. A handy tip to tag all the polygons at once is to click on group as Dynamesh sub, which is located in the tool palette under polygroups. Now let's press merge tries. Then we can delete the borders of the plane. For the polygon action, choose inset. Then select all polygons for the target, border only, inset each poly and standard for the modifiers. Then go ahead and delete the border faces. From the Zmodder brush, select Extrude All Polygons. Press Ctrl W to group visible and turn on dynamic. Set the Q grid to three and the smooth subdivision to one. Go ahead and turn off bevel and turn on chamfer. Let's dial in the coverage to 0 0.003. Now bring up the gizmo and choose deformer soft from the gear. The next thing we gotta do on our to-do list is to create the ZBrush logo to place in the front of the motorcycle. Navigate over to the light box and find the Spotlight tab. From there, click on Spotlight Primitives. Press the Z key to toggle on the Spotlight dial. Bring the logo over to the star and scale it up. Click on the Snapshot 3D option, the little camera icon, 
to transform that alpha into 3D. Once that's done, grab the top poly group and delete hidden. It's a good idea to run Polish by Features before we use ZRemesher. For ZRemesher, click on Half and set the adaptive size to 50. Run another Polish by Features to clean up any wobbly edges. And then repeat the ZRemesher process again on Half. We'll do this several more times until the topology is simplified enough without sacrificing the shape. For the final Z remesher, press Same and run it one more time. Oftentimes, this gives me a cleaner result. Now let's extrude all polygons. And then control click on the bevel width slider to bevel the polygroups. Press Crease PG and turn on Dynamic. Then go ahead and set the smooth subdivisions to 3. Let's go ahead and press B to open up the brush menu, and on the bottom, select Create Insert Mesh. When a new window pops up, click on New. Let's test it out by dragging one out. Now we can switch back to our main working tool and select the front fairing. Drag out the Z-Man logo inside the circle. Go ahead and use the gizmo to position them into place. Invert the mask and split unmasked points. Now we can rename the subtool to Z Man Logo. Next on the list is the front wing. Let's go ahead and bring up the gizmo, then select Cylinder 3D from the gear icon. Unmask the end and move it out a bit using the gizmo. Next, we'll center the gizmo and then go back to the gear icon and select Extender. Move the orange cone to extend the mesh to the length we need. Once we've got it just right, hit Accept to lock it in. Unmask the ends and scale them flat. Press Ctrl W to group visible. Unmask the bottom and scale it in the Y axis. Rotate to the side view and scale it in the X axis. Unmask the faces and extrude them using the gizmo. Mask the top points and move the bottom up until it matches our reference image. From there, rotate the view, then move the unmasked polys down a bit. Alt-click on the face to set the gizmo's orientation, then rotate it downwards. Unmask the polys, Alt-click on the faces to reset the gizmo's orientation and scale it down a bit. Reposition the ends using the gizmo to make sure it's a better match with our reference.
Let's select QMesh Flat Island and hold Control to duplicate the flat island. Now we can QMesh it again to give it some thickness. Rotate it 90 degrees and position it into place with the gizmo. With Transpose Flat Island selected, move it out a tad. The end of the wing has some interesting angles to it. Spend a couple minutes finessing it with the gizmo to align it as closely as possible with our reference. Now let's unmask the bottom and adjust the thickness. Now we can move the top part of the model so it intersects. Then let's go ahead and unmask the bottom and adjust the thickness. Next, control click on the canvas to mask the model. Bring up the gizmo and choose Cylinder 3D from the gear. Rotate and scale it into place. So what we're doing now is getting these meshes ready to DynaMesh. Since it's a flat surface, retopology will be pretty quick. So going with the high poly approach here makes sense. Delete the flat islands on both sides of the cylinder. Next for the edge action, select Close. For the target, select Close Holes and Circle. And for the modifier, select Polygroup Flat. Unmask the cylinder and move it into position. Then we can choose Extrude a Single Poly. Tag the bottom polys and extrude them downwards. With Transpose Polygroup Island selected, unmask the polys and scale them until they're flush. Let's use the gizmo to clean things up a bit. Press Uncrease All and add in some edge loops with Insert Multiple Edge Loops. Next we can turn on Dynamic and insert some supporting edge loops. For the DynaMesh utility, set the blur to 0, the poly count to 0.5, and turn on Use Auto Scaler. Drag the picker onto the mesh to set the resolution for DynaMesh. Now we can use the smooth brush and sculpting brushes to clean up the mesh.